Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. We've been talking about baby knitting for a few weeks. Now we're going to start knitting a baby blanket. Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. I'm here with Knitting Natter to help you learn to knit the easy way. Yes, we're starting to knit a baby blanket today. And this is part of the knit along. If you get the kit or the pattern before Friday this week, then you can join the live videos and you'll also get all the mistakes videos as well. You'll get automatic access to the exclusive playlists, which is full of videos where I make mistakes <laughs> and fix them on video. So yeah, there are lots of problems you might come across if you're knitting something like this. Um, and it's just one of those things when you're knitting. So we learn to fix them and then it's a lot easier as you move forward and keep knitting. So this is what we're knitting. As you can see here, we started knitting at the tip and I'll show you how we cast on for that in a moment. Then we're moving all the way through and creating a triangle with the knitting here. And then we'll move down to the final corner at the end. We'll do that next week. What I'm knitting with is a beautiful cotton. This is from Wood and the Gang, Shiny Happy Cotton. I've loved this yarn since I first used it in summer last year. Now, um, I was looking for yarn to put in the shop with the kits and searching for sustainable yarn, yarn that I can really stand behind and say there are many reasons I love this. That's why I've decided to use them in the shop. Okay, so let's get started. Here's the first part of the Four Corners Baby Blanket tutorial. So I have the four colours here that I'm going to knit the baby blanket with. And of course you can choose four colours, two colours, one colour, you can even choose three colours if you want to. But the idea is that we have four balls of yarn um, of this Wool in the Gang Shiny Happy Cotton. This is all available in the shop um, as a kit and I do hope you'll join us for the knit along. Um, what we also need is um, a five and a half millimetre needle. Now the option is there if you have them to knit on five and a half millimetre needles, um, flat needles if you want to, but they will end up being a lot of stitches on the needle which is why I've gone for the 80 centimetre circular needle so that makes it a lot easier so that's how i'm going to start and i'm also going to start with the orange and this is bizarre orange so here we go let's get knitting so the first thing we have to do is cast on and don't need to worry we're not casting on 75 stitches and trying to count them all and making sure we've got the right number we are casting on four stitches yes doesn't that sound nice so okay so we're going to create the slip stitch like this we're going to hold the short end of yarn and use that to make the slip stitch so hold the two fingers of your left hand out and you're going to wrap your um, short end of yarn around near the tips and then the short end of yarn nearer the knuckles and then I'm just holding the ends of yarn here in my hand. The needle goes underneath that first loop and pulls that second loop through and onto the needle. Now you can let those go and then all you have to do is pull on the short end of yarn to just tighten that there. So that's nice and not tight but not loose on the needle. And what I'm going to do now is cast on. I'm going to use the car cable cast on method so we need to put the right hand needle into that first stitch there. Just push it into that loop that's sitting at the front and basically what you're going to do is create a cross with your needles. The yarn goes around that needle that's in your right hand. You then pull that strand of yarn through and what it needs to do then is go onto the left hand needle. So from the front put that left hand needle into the stitch and there you go you have your second stitch now with the cable cast on we don't do the same thing again we don't go into the stitch we go behind the stitch so you can see there that there's both strands of that loop sitting in front of the needle there so now we go around again pull that loop through and from the front put it onto the left hand needle so that's three stitches, just one more into there, around, 
pull that loop through and put that onto the left hand needle. So there you go, that is casting on and we have cast on four stitches. So that's a good start. So from here, we're now going to increase. We can't have a baby blanket with just four stitches though, can we? <laughs> so we're going to knit two stitches. You know how to knit. The needle goes into that first loop, just as we did when we were starting the cast on. The yarn goes around, pull that loop through, and then you discard that stitch off of the left hand needle. There you go. Into the first part of that loop, yarn goes around, pull that yarn through with the right hand needle and drop it off of the left hand needle. Now this next stitch is where we get interesting. We're going to do something called KFB. We're going to knit into the front loop of the stitch, just like we did with the last two stitches, but we don't drop the stitch off of the left hand needle. What we do is then we manoeuvre this right hand needle around and put it into the back loop of that stitch there. Can you see that there? So now we're going to knit the back of the stitch, which means we've increased because we've knitted into that stitch twice. So we drop that left hand, uh, the stitch off of the left hand needle, and then we just knit the last stitch. There you go. There you are. So that is the first row. Now what do we do? We turn around and we get ready to knit the next stitch. Now this is fun because I'm knitting with a circular needle. Mm -hmm. I know when I first looked at someone knitting flat on a circular needle, I went, how do you do that? It's a circular needle. You're supposed to knit in a circle when you're using a circular needle. And then they show me what they're doing. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. So just pretend that they're not joined up. Like they cut in half here and it's one needle and it's another needle. So you just switch them over. <laughs> you don't have to knit in a circle when you're knitting a circle, when you're using circular needles. That completely blew my mind when I realized what she was doing it just seemed completely wrong <laughs> but then it just seems completely right so there you go um so now we're going to knit exactly the same as we did just in the last row so we're going to knit two one two we're then going to knit front back so that is k f b we're knitting to the front of that stitch and then we knit into the back of that stitch and then we knit the last two stitches on the row. So again, we have increased. There you are. We're going to do the same again. We're going to turn this round and start knitting the same way exactly again. So knit one, knit two, knit into the front, knit into the back, and then knit to the end of the row. Knit one, knit two, knit into the front, knit into the back, and knit to the end of the row. Now, when you're knitting this kind of thing, let me just show you samples um, that I did while I was just testing the pattern out. Here they are. With this kind of knit, what you could do is do an increase on this side and an increase on this side on the same row and then do a plain knit stitch, plain knit row on the other side. But that means you've got to keep track of whether you're doing an increase row or a plain row. So the reason we do every single row increase right at the beginning of the row is so that you don't forget where you are when you're picking up the knitting after um, 24 hours because you haven't knitted since yesterday then you don't forget whether it's a knit row or whether it's an increase row. So that's what we're doing here. We are increasing at the beginning of every row. Let me just show you. So if we increase at the beginning of this row, we get increases here. And then you turn it over and you increase at the beginning of this row, we also get increases on this side. So it increases um, exactly um, evenly on both sides. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to continue increasing all the way through 
most of this ball of orange. There we go. That's it. And I'm just going to um, sit here and do this. And like I say, until I've done most of this ball of orange on. starting to see the increase now you can see the increase with the number of balls and the number of stitches it's not quite easy to see the increase yet with the um, shape Okay, I now have 16 stitches on the needle and you I can more easily see the um, shape just creating. Um, it looks even in the centre and then it's just um, setting just a slight angle on the outside stitches there. And the increase is just here on that third stitch. So there you go. I'm going to continue knitting um, and I'll see you when we're ready to change colour. Okay, so I started down here with four stitches and I've knitted all the way through um, the first ball of yarn to 96 stitches. There is a little bit left um, on the first ball but we're getting to 96 stitches and then we're stopping. And this is where we add in the next ball of yarn. So here I am using Jog Grey and this is still the Shiny Happy Cotton from Wool and the Gang. I'm using this all the way through the blanket. I do suggest when you're knitting something like this, you use the same yarn, even if it's not the same colour, all the way through. To that, it means that you're using it the same, you're washing it the same, the stitch count and the stitch size will be the same. Everything works well. So we're going to start with this one. And I was finding the middle of this yarn and pulled out a bit too much yarn, but that's going to be fine. That will just work its way out of the centre and then I'll be in that ball of yarn before I know it. Right, so what I'm going to do from here is firstly undo that knot because that's obviously not something we want. Okay, so you can see now why I'm using a long needle. This um, is 80 centimetres and it will stretch until I get to the top point here. Um, it will go further. But if I was using a single needle like this, then all of the stitches would really be bunched up um, quite close together. So this is why for a, a long uh, blanket, a wide blanket like this, um, I do prefer the circular needle. It just gives me that extra control. Okay. So from here, the yarn is going to the orange, the thread is going to the orange ball of yarn there. So that's where I'm starting. And I'm gonna knit with the gray from here. 
So I don't do anything fancy. Um, all I'm doing is making sure that I keep that orange. I'm going to hold that in my left hand as I start knitting so that that end stitch doesn't end up loose um, as I start. Here we go. So one, two, KFB, and then carry on. So that's it. That's all I'm going to do is just change colour. Nothing fancy, nothing over the top. And then when I get a few more stitches in, what I will do is cut this orange thread and just knot them together, just a single not there and then when I've finished knitting completely I can um, weave those threads in there we are okay so that's the first half of the baby blanket tutorial you can cast on you can increase and move all the way through two colours up to 136 stitches. What we're going to do next week is then move through that second part of the square, the second triangle, and decrease all the way up again to finish off the blanket through the next two colours. So that's going to be next week. Do join us for that. And like I said at the beginning, if you want to join us for the knit along, then we started that already. Yes, we started that this week, we started it yesterday, but if you get the kit or if you get the pattern, before Friday this week, then you can join both of the Knit and Natters. That's when we get together live on video, exclusively through the Knit Along, and I'll be answering any questions that you have as part of this Knit Along. Also, we can share our progress, you can come on video and share how far you've got. We can share all the different colorways that we're knitting as well. I'd love to see what you're up to. I do hope you'll be able to join us for that. Great, thanks so much for joining me. If you've enjoyed this and you want to see next week's video, then make sure you're subscribed. Hit the subscribe button and click on the notifications bell as well. That will mean that YouTube will send you a notification when I release the next video. And you can stick with us for years to come as well. I release a new knitting video every Tuesday, every week. The second tutorial will be next week. But like I said, the mistakes videos will be exclusive to the net along. If you'd like to be able to see them, then do get the pattern or the kit, both of which are linked below in the description. I'll see you for that second tutorial next week or indeed for the net along knit and natter. Thanks so much for joining me this week. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Happy knitting.